Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE physics revision video. Today we're going to be going through the first part of the topic of electromagnetic effects. So an electromagnetic induction is the phenomenon where a conductor such as a wire, which moves across a magnetic field or in, uh, in a setting where a changing magnetic field is within the vicinity of a conductor, it will induce an EMF or a voltage across that conductor. So, for example, when a bar magnet is moved towards and away from the coil, it will induce an EMF within the coil. Why? Because the magnetic field lines of the bar magnet become cut from the coil as the magnet is moved in and out. And so, therefore, when the EMF is produced, you will get a brief reading on the sensitive voltmeter, and the direction of that depends on how we move the bar magnet, which we will look at now. So the bar magnet moving towards the coil, okay, so when the north pole of the bar magnet is moved towards the coil like in this diagram shown, the needle on the voltmeter will briefly flick to the right before returning back to the center. And so this is because the coil cuts the magnetic field lines of the bar magnet and this induces an EMF across the coil which is then perceived by the voltmeter. And so the EMF that gets in, uh, induced across the coil causes a current to flow in a particular direction. Now, when you have a current flowing within the coil, then you will actually allow that coil to become a temporary magnet and behave like a bar magnet. And with any sort of magnets, you're going to have a north and south pole, and the induced pole on the coil is going to be always in a way that will oppose the motion of the bar magnet. So for example, here we're moving the north pole closer to the uh, closer to the coil, and so therefore the, EM, uh, the direction of EMF and the direction of current causing a north and south pole to form on the coil, the poles will be positioned to oppose the movement of the bar magnet. So therefore in this case, because light poles repel each other, and it wants to push the bar magnet away, you're going to get a north pole that is formed or induced closest to the north pole of the bar magnet, which is moving towards the coil. Okay, so you always just need to understand that the poles that will be formed in the coil will try to oppose the movement of the bar magnet. So what happens when we do the opposite? What happens when we move the bar magnet away from the coil. Well, when the north pole of the bar magnet is moved away from the coil, then the needle on the voltmeter will briefly flick to the left. Recall the last time when we pushed the magnet towards the coil, it moved to the right. So this is going in the opposite direction this time. Why the coil again cuts the magnetic fields, but this time in the complete opposite direction as the bar magnet is moving away from the coil. So the induced EMF will also be in the opposite direction. And again, as we've discussed before, the poles that are, that are induced in the coil will always try to oppose the movement of the bar magnet. This time it's going away from the coil and it wants to keep it close to it, so it's going to try to pull it in. So again, the poles, opposite poles will attract each other, so therefore closest to the north pole on the left-hand end of the coil, you're going to get an induction of the south pole. And so if you were to really try to dig deeper and figure out the direction of current, because as you can see here, uh, this first time when the magnet was moving towards the coil, the current flow was in this particular direction, and the second time we did it, the current flow was going in the opposite direction. And if you want to figure out the actual direction of current, then all you need to know is backtrace. So remember, when we took a look at the direction of current in a solenoid and how depending on that direction, and it, it induces a certain pole. Well, if we have a north pole here, like we do, then you're going to know that the current flow will be anti-clockwise, as opposed to if you've got a south pole, then you know that the current flow is going to be clockwise. So you're just backtracing from what you already know, and uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, then check out my previous videos, because we've covered um, how the current within a solenoid will induce a certain magnetic pole uh, within. 
Okay, so the magnitude of the induced EMF can be increased by three things. One, moving the magnet closer, or sorry, faster. Two, putting more turns in the coil that you use. And number three, using a stronger magnet. So now that we know the fundamentals of the uh, phenomenon of electromagnetic induction, we're going to use that to create AC current. So there's two types of current. The first one is AC current, which is alternating current. This is when the direction of current changes periodically, whereas DC current is a form of direct current, which is unidirectional. It doesn't change in direction at all. So the AC generator makes AC current using the fundamentals of what we talked about before. It is a little bit complex, so let's have a look at this. It's made up of a north and south pole of a magnet, so you get the field lines of the magnet going from the north to south. Within the two magnetic fields, uh, you're going to have a coil that I've labeled A, B, C, and D at each corner. And so this coil is going to be rotating around and around and around. And so the side AB, which is the yellow side that I've labeled here, is connected to slip ring 2. And the side C and D is the blue side, which is connected to the first slip ring. And each of these slip rings are connected to an external circuit. Of course, you know, as the coil rotates around and around, this is going to start to generate alternating current within the external circuit that it is connected to. And will will demonstrate how that happens. So first things first, you know, as the coil moves around, rotates, you know, in this case clockwise, you're going to see that the coil will cut the magnetic field lines along the way. And as it cuts the magnetic field lines, this is going to generate some sort of electromotive force or EMF within the coil, and it's going to generate the, the current and how exactly it produces alternating current is what we will discuss in a bit more detail. So as we've discussed before, the magnetic field lines will go from north to south pole. And you can see that as the coil rotates, the side AB will actually cut the magnetic field lines upwards, whereas CD will cut the magnetic field lines downwards in this particular example. Now, eventually, as the coil rotates, you'll end up having side A and B on this right-hand side and C and D on the left-hand side as it rotates further. Now, when side A, B hits this right-hand side here, then it's going to start to cut the coil, uh, sorry, the cut the magnetic field lines downwards this time. It was cutting it upwards on the left-hand side, but it'll start to cut it downwards on the right-hand side and vice versa for this side here, D and C, when it reaches the opposite end, it's going to cut the field lines upwards. So each time this reverses itself, you're going to get an electromotive force that is going to produce current in an opposite direction. Okay, so you get EMF produced, uh, causing current to flow in one particular direction when the coil cuts upwards, but you get the EMF produced in the complete opposite direction when the coil cuts the field lines downwards. So every time A, B switches over, or D and C switches over inside, you'll get a reversal of the direction of current. I know that might be a little bit confusing at the moment, but we're going to take a deeper look at this using the Fleming's right-hand rule. So the Fleming's right-hand rule is basically use your right arm and white right hand to align your fingers like this. The motion is, of course, the motion of the coil or the side of the coil that uh, is moving in a particular direction. You've got the field, which is the direction of the magnetic field lines, and you've got the direction of current. Of course, in this particular scenario, we know the motion and we know the fields, and this last bit, your middle finger is going to give you the direction of the current. So align your right hand uh, using this rule with side A and B, you'll instantly notice that your middle finger will point in this direction here, suggesting that current is flowing in that particular direction. If you were to do the same for the side D and C of the coil, you'll actually get the current going uh, in this direction. So you know that current is going to be induced in the direction of C to D to A to B. 
okay? So that's the direction of current that you'll get in this particular instance with A and B being on the left-hand side and C and D being on the right-hand side or the bottom, okay? So this is just a summary of that. Now, eventually, side A and B is going to rotate over to the other hand, okay? Now, when this happens, I want you to tr try and use the Fleming's right-hand rule again and see where the current leads you. Again, the current is still going in this sort of direction, but you can see it's going in the opposite direction than it was before. So it's still going, rotating around these four quadrants. But remember, if you take a look at this first diagram, the current was going from A to B and then B to, to C eventually and C to D. But now it's going the opposite. It's going from B to A and D to C. Okay, and of course, this direction of current will feed into the slip rings and the overall current direction will be completely reversed. So every time one side moves over to the other side, the induced current will be in the opposite direction. That's why you get alternating current because each half rotation of the coil, you're going to get an opposite direction of EMF and current being induced from that. So let's take a look at the AC voltage with time graph. And so here, as I said before, the coil is rotating. So here you've got the horizontal position of the coil and eventually it will turn vertical as it rotates 360 degrees. Now EMF peaks when the position of the coil is horizontal along the magnetic field line, as you see in this diagram here. When the coil reaches a completely vertical position, that's when the EMF induced is basically zero. And this is really important. So imagine the vertical position of the coil, that's going to be zero EMF induced. And as it moves along and eventually reaches a horizontal position, that's when it starts to peak. As the coil moves further and further and rotates further, the induced EMF will start to decrease until it hits that horizontal position again. And from that point on, it's going to start to rotate further and the EMF is going to start to increase again, except this time it's going to be in the opposite direction. Remember, because the induction of EMF or the direction of EMF and current is going to be reversed and it will eventually peak again, but in the complete opposite direction. And therefore you have this sort of alternating current uh, or a wave form being formed uh, on this graph. And that's really important to understand. So I know it may be a fairly tough concept at the moment, but uh, I hope this video helped to clarify that. And I will see you in the next video where we will be looking at DC motors and things like that.